Imam al-Baqir knew there were khulafa like this. So what did Imam al-Baqir do? Did he stand up? No. Imam al-Baqir thought, if these people are engaged in these things, let me sit down and spread the message of Ahl al-Bayt and their teachings. Because the climate Imam al-Baqir was living in, many new schools of Islam were developing. Imam Amir al-Mu'mineen, Imam al-Hassan, Imam al-Hussein, Imam Zain al abdin were not able in their own respective times to spread the teachings teachings of Rasulullah because they were under much pressure. Imam al-Baqir is the man who began the spread of the teachings of Rasulullah in the school of Ahl al-Bayt. He used to sit in the mosque of Rasulullah and he used to spread the words of Rasulullah to everybody. A lot of Shias, they might not know, they don't know the history of Imamism. So because you don't know the history, what you're getting told now by say the monarch Shwani is the Saqifa, the Khilafa, potentially link it to Banu Umayyah later, link it to Karbala, and basically like say, look, this is the mess of Saqifa, which is kind of where the mindset goes. The thing that they're not what they're not understanding is is that with this same kind of ugly argument, if you study the the history of Imamism and how each sect of Sh of Shiism kind of branched out, there was complete mess. After dying on after the dying of most imams, uh, from Imam Bakr, Imam Zain al Abidin onwards, the Zaydiya split. We have disputes. You have the Ismaili split. You have after each imam the Fatiha, like close companions and imams, and there's confusion about who the imam is. Uh, on top of that, we can mention the Ghayba and how the confusion on that is. That confusion is still going till today. Uh, Amongst the scholarship of the Maraja, you have the Asuli Akhbari dispute, calling each other deviants. You have different strands of Shiism today, Imamism in terms of Wulayat al Faqi, Wulayat al Taqween, different strands of Ghulu. If I put all of this together, well, why didn't Allah just keep sending Imams? Because by Allah not doing that, Allah's now. So I can say by Allah not doing that, or Imam, the 11th Imam, or not doing that, and not. Or, and by Allah endorsing a Ghayba, it's now caused this. So Allah should have just kept sending, keep sending imams. Like, and that's, by the way, the Aga Khani claim. Now, that's a whole different argument that they're a mess themselves. But do you see my point? <laughs> no, no, absolutely. That's a valid argument. I mean, if you're going to blame all these kinds of confusions on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then that argument can be made against Ghaybah as well. Because for 12 centuries, uh, it is precisely because of the Ghaybah of the Imam that the Shias became so hopelessly divided. That you have someone like a Sayyid Ali Ayatollah al Uzma, Sayyid Ali Bahru al Ulum calling Wilaya Takbiniya Kufr, okay, in his Al-Burhan Al-Qatih Fi Sharh Al-Muqtasar Al-Nafi' And on the other hand, you have someone among the contemporary Maraja, someone like uh, Sadiq Al-Ruhani, who calls it Daruriyat Al-Madhab. It's among the fun fundamental non-negotiable Aqeedah of the Madhab. Well, one endorsing Tafweed, which is an old school belief, repackaged as Wilaya Taqween, one calling it Kufr. So, where's the guidance? I thought... By by, I thought we solved all this by the issue of God choosing. So we can link it back as well and say, based on that, if that never happened, this would have not happened. So Akalan, we can do, we can keep doing this all day. Right. I mean, if you're gonna argue rationally like this, then you cannot rationalize the Ghaybah because the Ghaybah basically defeats the purpose of the Imama. Then, if the purpose of Imama was any, that there should be no confusion in the Ummah, yeah. And any Shia who wants to know about this, I recommend. Um, the standardized, the kind of the standard book on this, which is Crisis, Crisis and Consolidation by Dr. Sayyid Mudarasi. Hundred, put that up on the screen, Sayyid. Put that on the screen. Yeah. Yeah. Let let let, let, let it catch it. There you go. Yeah. Crisis. There you go. Anyone that wants to understand the history, because most people don't understand the history of Imamism, and you think that it's some smooth father gave it to son, no disputes. When you actually study the history, you'll realize after every Imam, there's been separate sects that have been made, and there's been complete disarray. Amongst the Imam students, and I'm talking about the close students, according to the 12 hour narrative, you will realize that hold on, like there is a big issue going on here, and there's a big problem going on here, and it doesn't that doesn't stop to the fact that we the Shia sects haven't ever like just because a lot of those Shia sects have died doesn't mean that you had a smooth transition. So definitely read that book and you yeah, will see. And do you know what the reason behind all that chaos and confusion? So the whole reason why the book is called Crisis and, and Consolidation. The yeah. crisis was, what was the cause of the crisis? It was the fact, it was taqiyah. Basically, when you have imams 
who do not call to themselves and they do not announce their imama and also they do not announce who is going to be the next one after them to the mainstream majority of their followers naturally they fall into confusion and not only do they fall into confusion they end up accepting false imams and uh, there is plenty of evidence when you permit me and give you the opportunity i will i will showcase it on the screen and you will see so i think from a akli perspective say i think that should be enough to kind of deal with those points 